Welcome to Saturday's Warrior, the channel where we talk all things BYU and Big 12 and realignment, which we've been talking about less and less now that the season is here. But then Ross Dellinger went and dropped this nugget on us about the Pac-12 uh, looking to reform. So go and poach teams from the Mountain West. And he dropped this late while I was recording another video uh, for another show. Uh, and uh, I'm East Coast. I just want to go to bed. Look, I've got my contacts out, ready to go to bed, but had to address uh, this issue uh, about the Pac-12. I just, uh, this is wild stuff uh, after uh, they're essentially left for dead and everyone's talking about them, go, uh, them meaning the uh, Oregon State and Washington State going to the Mountain West and, or, you know, the American, whatever, all these other options thinking it was pretty much done, and now they're looking to uh, regroup themselves. So let's uh, turn to this Ross Dellinger article, which I'll read a few excerpts qu here um, quickly. But uh, before I do, uh, please, uh, if you like talking realignment, you like all this uh, stuff, college football, please uh, give the vi uh, this video a like, subscribe to the channel. We do try to cover uh, realignment news as it happens. Um, but okay, so now I've got the article pulled up. It just says um, the two-team conference is targeting Boise State, San Diego State, Colorado State, and Fresno State as new additions to the reimagined Pac-12. Those schools are expected to soon apply or have already applied for membership into the conference. The first step is in the process to complete the deal. They would join the league starting with the 2026 school year. So this is wild. Uh, what is interesting about it, and it's not so much surprising the schools that, they've, uh, that they're talking with, but that that would still leave the conference shy of the eight minimum because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's what I get for counting um, while I record. So six schools. So they still need two more to hit that threshold, and I believe they actually talk about that in the article, so let's keep going. Um, it says uh, that officials from the Pac-12 have spent the last year examining possible options for their future after everyone else left the conference. Uh, they have long held the belief that they can preserve the Pac-12 brand by reconstructing the conference through expansion using its 108-year-old tradition, history, and assets to attract new members. Uh, you know, we knew that this was a chance. People talked about this early on, but I just think it's interesting because, like we said, they were kind of left for dead. It didn't seem like that was going to be a viable option, that it was more likely um, that they would go to perhaps uh, one of the group of five conferences or, or form a new kind of conference that was in between, whatever. Um, but I felt like that this option had kind of been left behind, but apparently they've still been working hard on it behind the scenes. Um, let's see, it says, this is expected to be the first phase in a multi-phase expansion endeavor to reach, at the very least, there we go, eight schools, the NCAA's minimum required to qualify as an FBS conference. In the, if the aforementioned four join the league, uh, uh, the league needs two more to complete the process. It must reach the minimum by July 2026, the end of the NCAA's two-year grace period. Um, the Big 12's board, or sorry, the Pac-12's board must approve any membership applications and are expected to do so soon. I would imagine that it'll be rather easy to get consensus from uh, the two schools at this point. Um, the expansion is not inexpensive. So this is very interesting. So each Mountain West school is contractually bound to a $17 million exit fee, and the Pac-12 is on the hook for an additional 10 to $12 million dollar penalty fee for every school they acquire as part of a scheduling agreement the conference struck with the Mountain West. So that's interesting. Like, why would they have signed that deal with the Mountain West if they were hoping to ultimately poach schools from the Mountain West? And I wonder if uh, at that point when they signed that, well, one, they were desperate because they needed to get a schedule in place for this year. But um, I wonder if they really were considering, you know, either doing some sort of merger still at that point, and they were thinking that was the most likely option, or maybe they were considering going to the Mountain West. 
Uh, we know that that was kind of turned down when the Mountain West was like, nah, you guys don't bring that much to the table. We're not going to, you know, the TV networks, I can't remember how much it was, but it really didn't bring uh, that much. And so the Mountain West was actually rebuffing uh, the the Pac-2 schools. And so maybe at that point they, they turned uh, back to this, or maybe it was just the only way, I don't know. But, I mean, we're talking about up to $29 million just to acquire every for every school they acquire. Um, so very, very interesting there. And then it says, after months of examining future options, league officials determined to reimagine the conference with an expansion approach. Uh, in negotiations with potential new members, Pac-12 officials and third parties have presented a plan that features a new media rights agreement worth more than the Mountain West's current or future television package as well as a sponsorship potential of pac-12 brand so uh, you know they they definitely feel like there's more value there um, with the pac-12 and and obviously the schools that are in the mountain west would have to think that if uh, they were going to jump ship and pay all that money to get into the pac-12 at this point um, when you know they have a pretty good thing going uh, with uh, the Mountain West. So uh, very interesting. Uh, all I can say is for those Pac-12 schools that don't have George Klyovkov uh, in charge of uh, getting that uh, deal signed. Okay, the two schools, um, sorry, the two schools offer attractive assets that could total millions as a result of the 10 schools departing the conference, including monies from the Rose Bowl contract, college football playoff, NCAA basketball tournament units, and Pac-12 enterprises. Uh, previously the Pac-12 network. Uh, yes, but how much of that is going to have to go towards forking out to help uh, these schools exit the Mountain West? Uh, the league lost its designation as an, an autonomous power conference. Um, let's see, yeah, so it basically, it, it, I don't know if they'd, if they'd be able to regain that autonomous status, so being a, technically a, a power conference, uh, it looks, I believe that it would be a, uh, a group of five now, group of six with the Pac-12, um, and I don't think that there's enough there to help them elevate again, but we'll see. I'm sure they'll try. Uh, during Pac-12 media days in Las Vegas uh, in July, Gould, the, uh, uh, the, the conference uh, commissioner, uh, hosted media members, administrators, coaches, and players for a gathering to celebrate the conference, projecting a bright future and suggesting a potential rebuild. Uh, which we kind of all thought was comical at the time, but uh, here they go, uh, still working on it. So um, this is wild because it says, uh, and this is what I was uh, actually alluding to earlier, it says, however, earlier this month, negotiations broke down between the Pac-12 and Mountain West over adding a second year to the 2024 football scheduling alliance, a fight that most notably involved uh, financial differences according to those with knowledge of the talks. And so... Um, it seems like they really wanted to make that work, extend this for a year. So it sounds like with that not working, they're having to move really quickly. And I wonder if this is, it's got to be in some way related to all the scheduling changes we saw with BYU moving a few things around. That came out today that they're uh, pushing back um, a uh, another, um, what is it, Utah Tech or Southern Utah, I think. Uh, and then they're moving in Portland State. And so it's who I think was scheduled to play OSU. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of uh, movement there in the West with all these these schools um, changing schedules around, so it's got to be related to this as they uh, look to re regroup and reform the Pac-12. Um, and this is the interesting thing, which I think we'll all be discussing a lot until everything settles down, is the move by the Pac-12 could ignite another round of realignment, at least for those schools at the Group of Five or even FCS level. In needing to fill departures, the Mountain West is likely to evaluate possible members to elevate to FBS, which is has also gotten more expensive. But you'd think with all the buyout money and all this money coming from the Pac schools that they can help uh, anybody that wants to jump up to the FBS level. Uh, you would obviously think a lot of uh, there's a lot of good programs in the uh, that would fit very well geographically from the Big Sky Conference as well as the Missouri Valley Conference. And so you think that they'd go after a lot of them if they're not able to get other schools, uh, current FBS 
uh, schools to perhaps switch conferences and come to the Mountain West, West, which I don't know how likely that is. We will likely do other videos uh, on all of this and break it down once we have time to digest it and look at it. But um, it says the Pac-12's move may have another ripple effect on a grander stage, the college football playoff, given the departures of the Pac-12 CFP leaders last year voted to change the 12-team expanded playoff format. They removed one automatic qualifying spot and added an at-large bid for a format that features five AQs for the highest-ranked conference champions and seven at-large bids. Okay, we're aware of all that, but uh, what does that mean for the Pac-12 now and not getting an automatic bid, um, which basically makes them, as we already said, another... Uh, now a group of six conference, uh, all competing for that uh, that at lar- or that um, being the highest ranked uh, G five team or G six team, I guess it would be to get into the playoff. So um, a lot here. This is going to have big ripples, big impact throughout college football, and again, more and more realignment. Uh, we have to see who the uh, remaining schools the Pac-12 will look to add, whether it's just two more or how big they go and which schools they add, but then also then the ripple effects from those, the Mountain West or anybody else. Um, let's say uh, Pac, uh, sorry, uh, let's say Stanford and Cal or SMU, whatever, if they you know switch from the ACC over to this uh, uh, Pac-12, which I don't think they would because they'd be going from a power conference to a, uh, a non-power conference, but Let's say they were that you know with the ACC at other I don't know there's just all sorts of uh, ripple effects that are we're gonna see from this um, really wild and hey at the end of the day you know all the Boise State fans that felt like they deserved to be in the Pac-12 they get there before BYU and all this other stuff well here you go you're you're gonna be at the Pac-12 uh, before BYU so congratulations on that uh, you know it's just funny how the same teams. Uh, continue to go from uh, trying to get into the WAC as the WAC is, you know, being left behind. And then they get into the Mountain West as those same schools leave uh, the Mountain West. And now these same schools are getting in the Pac-12 after um, all the top brands have left there. So they're always kind of one step behind. That is frustrating as a fan base. I get it as a BYU fan. BYU fan finally got to the Big 12, a power conference, which we're ecstatic about. But now people keep talking about that changing to a power two um and so that's that's frustrating to to feel that especially when you're solid programs that are um that were consistently talked about in um realignment and moving into power conferences whoops sorry video cut out there but yeah so very interested to keep following this we'll continue to follow the story and post on it so if you're interested in realignment which if you made it this far you most certainly are then uh please hit that bell subscribe to the channel uh, so you can catch all of that be sure to like this video and as always go cougs